السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم أني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هليتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يبقاه قولي السلام عليكم أبي ون السلام عليكم جزاكم الله خير I can ask everyone if there is a an empty chair next to you fill it because there's still ladies coming and all the young the youth if you can sit on the floor that would be great جزاكم الله خير بسم الله I just said <clears throat> that in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, all the blessings on upon the Rasul It's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's heartwarming. It's a Tuesday, it's 6.30. Some of you, maybe all of you, work or study or have other things. You left your home, you came, you drove, you are in California. So at least you drove minimum 10, 15, 20 minutes. Some of you even more. The reason I'm starting with this is because we want this to be a blessed gathering. It's very important wherever you are, young and old, is to be blessed. Meaning, when you leave, not necessarily has to be you learn something about the deen. Of course, it's a great, but not all our life, 100% is about the deen. When I'm left, when I'm going to leave, I learn something, I'm a better human being, young and old. I'm a better person. And if you left and you are not a better person, or I am not a better person, I lost. I'm a loser. Because this hour or hour and a half is not going to come again. You know that. Al Hassan Basri has a beautiful saying. You all remember this. We are, he said, Ibn Adam, children of Adam, all of you. We are but few days. All of us are days. And every day ends, part of me ended. Can you bring last week? Can you bring last Tuesday? Right? Why not? You're all thinking. Why not? I can't, because I am not, I'm not Allah. He's the only one who can bring the past, to the present, to the future. So every minute, make the best that you can. You want to have fun, make the best fun in the way pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to be so serious, be serious. But in the best way, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's beautiful to have you all. Definitely, I have to thank Islamic Society of um, Islamic Center of Irvine. They have been after me from day one, my sister Abuya, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her. Alhamdulillah, it happened. And inshallah, if Allah wills, we'll be doing the uh, same series we did in Rahma Center. We'll be doing it here. Inshallah, not next week, the week after. It's going to be eight weeks again. And this is again for the youth and for the adult. And I'm focusing on the adult more than the youth. Which is very opposite to everybody. Because you know why? Because if the adult knows, the youth will follow. If I don't know, then how do I expect my daughter to learn? And we always blame them, and I'm not defending them. I have a lot of talk to them too. But in general, if I don't know, don't expect your daughter to know. Or your son, or your spouse, or your brother. You need to learn first. So, inshallah, what we're going to be doing in eight weeks exactly. So the first Tuesday in August for two months is Muslims, what do we believe in? Who are we? It's becoming so confusing. Everybody says whatever they want to say. And we don't even, even us who are like grounded in what we know, sometimes you, you say, you know what, mm -hmm. really? So this is what we're going to be doing, inshallah, in August. Today, topic was actually requested by the Islamic Center of Work. It was not my choice. And I said, sure, but what? And I know the answer now. Because this is jam-packed, right? How often you see that many ladies coming to listen to a topic. It tells you what? It's an extremely important topic. And we are all suffering, young and old. There is a huge gap between this generation and this generation. Huge. Am I right? Yes. Youth, am I right? 
you speak English, your mother speaks French, <laughs> right? Or you speak French and your mom speaks Arabic. I always use this term when I don't understand what people are saying, because like, I know French. And there is a reason for that, there is many reasons. So what I'm gonna try to do, inshallah, it's an hour, I will do only one hour, because I want to leave the last half an hour before my questions and answers. This is how we learn. We need to talk about it. There's topics we really need to talk about. It. And as some of you may know, I'm a physician and I always say this to my patient, unless I know what is the problem, I can't solve it. Unless you tell me what's wrong with you, I can't help you. So the same thing is here. What is the problem? Number one, is there a problem? Let's start, I'm gonna ask youth, and then I'll ask the other. Do we have a problem in the mother-daughter relationship? Youth, yes or no? How many say yes, there's a huge, there's a problem. Huge, big or small? Show me hands, don't be scared. No, uh, youth first. Okay, they all say yes, but they don't wanna say it. How about mothers? How many of you think your daughter doesn't listen to you? She doesn't understand what I'm saying. And, right? Okay, so all of you, all of you. And the youth all, but they didn't wanna say it for many reasons. We will have one day a class for the youth only, and then we will talk. Fine. So that, let's go, remember this is a mosque, this is the house of Allah. So we all have to base what we talk and learn based on what? Not my opinion, or your opinion, or what your mom taught you, or what my mom taught me. It needs to be based on one thing, and one thing only. And that is what Allah said, what Rasulullah said. And I'll give you this, I always do this, and it's not a joke, it's real. And it happened to me, one member of my family was a Eid, Tomorrow was Eid. I was still a resident doing OBGYN, which is basically 16 to 18 hours a day. Barely I can sleep. And tomorrow is Eid. So the culture usually, which most of you know that, whichever country you come in, there's cookies for the Eid, right? You name it, every country has its own one. So I was talking to my sister, and tomorrow is Eid. And I am on call last night. And I'm working today. She said, did you make your cookies? And I was like, no. <gasps> You didn't make the cookies? And I said, which hadith in the Bukhari <laughs> said, I have to do cookies for tomorrow? Did you get my point? So base, base your judgment, base your principles, and this is for both, but definitely mainly for the mothers. Get upset because what the daughter did upsets Allah. Not because this is not what you did when you were young, or this is what your mom said, or let her know what people will say. Because the moment she's gonna move, and she will move sooner or later, goes to college, get married, then that's it. She and Allah. And the same thing for you. That's why Rasulullah what did he say? Attaqwa you all know this famous hadith, taqwa, Allah conscious, is here. It's not when I am around you, or your mom around you. It's when you're alone, in front of this, or this. And only him seeing you, what are you doing? And you can claim what you want to claim, but he knows. So first of all, this relationship needs to be based on what pleases him. And I'm going to keep using the word him, H capital. H capital, this is the no of course. I, uh, so, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what Rasulullah said, if they didn't say it, or they didn't say the opposite, then we need, then this is a place for discussion. She could be right, or you could be right. So that's the first thing, first foundation. We're gonna put foundation for this relationship. Without foundation, it's gonna be my opinion and your opinion. And you can be wrong and I can be right. And again, it's not a joke, I just moved from the Midwest to California. Literally as if I moved to another country, especially in medicine. It's very different. Things are very different. But who said this is right or that one was right? It's only what Allah says. 
And again, you, you know, you came from Virginia. Also, it's very different from you. So the first foundation, when you say to your daughter, you're wrong, or when you say to your mother, you are wrong, based on what? I always ask this question, based on what? Who said so? So that's number one. Number two, and also let's go to the basics. What, who is the mother? Whose mother? Any of the youth, whose mother? Yes. Exactly. She's the, the woman who gave birth to me. Absolutely. Who, she, who else? Who she is? Who's she? Do you know this hadith? Most of you in the back probably know this hadith. A man came to Rasulullah. I need the youth to memorize this hadith. And not very youth, who your mothers are still alive. Like you know your name. Because unless you know this hadith, the relationship will never change. A man, and he's, this is a man, not a woman. A man came to Rasulullah who was sitting with their companions. And this is Sayyidina Abu Huraira narrated this. He said, Ja a Rasulullah. A man came to Rasulullah meaning they were there sitting and they saw the man coming. And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. And he asked this question, no name, who is this man? We don't know. The issue is not the man. The issue is the question. What is the question? He said, Ya Rasulullah. Who among people? Look at look at this. Look at this hall. There are more than two hundred people. And he asked him, and he didn't say who are from among this. He said from everybody, all human beings. Who is number one? Has the right of my fine treatment to him? Meaning that person, I'll treat them very well. Excellent, actually, he said, Ahsan, Yuhusti Sohbati. Who is the person I have to treat very well? I have to. What did he say? He said, Your mother, the woman who gave birth to you and me and us. And he said, Okay. And then, second, the answer, Mother, your mother, your mother. Third, Tuma, your mother. Uh -huh. Then, who? Your father. Engrave this in your heart. Remember, the foundation in this relationship is not what social media says, says or the influencers, YouTube or TikTok influencers says. It's what Allah says and what the Rasulullah said. So the first thing when I come and talk to my mom, I have to think, this is the woman who Allah will ask me, did you treat her well? All of you, all of you. Did you treat her best? Not well, best. How many of you adults, you still have your mother living? Lucky you. And I mean it, I lost my mom, I was very young. And it's very different. Whatever you want to do is not the same when she's alive. And this is for everybody. Because this is time. Once they go, again, you can't bring them back. So the first thing Allah says, and the Rasulullah says, number two, who is this woman that I am talking about? My mom. Yeah. But that's not how Allah wants me to look at her. Who is she? My mother. The person, the only person that has three times rights upon me before anybody else. Not your friend, not your brother, not your father, not the person you love, not your husband. It's your mother. One, who is the daughter of Islam? It's not a one way, this is a relationship. Relationship meaning two people together. So this is the mother. What about the daughter? Who is she? In Islam, what did the Rasul say about his daughter? Do you know? How many daughters the Rasul had? Four, right? Who can tell me the names? Not the adult, youth. Youth, who's youth? Who's youth? <laughs> yes? Zaina? Ruqayya, Sayyidah Ruqayya? Say the Fatima and Umm 
broken for me. So four, right? He has four daughters, right? Zainab, Uqayya, Umu Kulthum, and Fatima. What did he say about one of them? Specifically about her. Daughters, you need to know this. So when mom gets upset with you, says, nah, -uh, that's not what the Rasulullah said. Fatima kit'atun minni, he said. Fatima is piece of me, part of me. You know, when you say, I love her, she's part of me, that's what he said about her. About her. They say, Sayyidah Aisha reported this. She said, we were all sitting, and she came in, Fatima. His face changed. And he starts smiling. And he moved. So she come and sit next to him. All his wives were there. This is the Rasul Islam. This is not you. And he moved. And he made her sit next to him. Then he whispered something in her ears. And she started crying. And then he whispered something in her ears. And she started laughing. Then, as she was moved, leaving, Sayyidah Aisha, of course, came to her and said, what did he say that made you laugh and made you cry? You know what she said? I will never say something the Rasulullah said it to me only. She didn't say it till he died. And Sayyidah Aisha wanted to know. So she went to her and said, now he died. Teach us what did he tell you? He said, he said to me, now, Jibreel came to me and revised the Quran with me in Ramadan twice. So I think this is it for me. So she started crying. Then he said, you will be the first one who's going to follow me. And I start laughing. This is who she was for him. The relationship is two ways. It is you and her, and you and her. So again, the second, first foundation, what Allah says, what the Rasulullah says, not the culture. Culture is a killer. It's beautiful, but it is not always right. And I am not in the same culture. Unfortunately, but I'm not. And if you still live in your culture, you're living in the La La Land. You know the La La Land? Absolutely, especially if you don't work. If you work, you will know the difference. But if you don't work and you live at home, you have no idea what is happening outside. It's a complete different world. I was, I just came from the hospital this morning. I was working last night. It's a different world. What does it mean to go and pray? What does it mean that you don't laugh with, the, with what they, you get engaged in what they are saying? It's a, it's a different world. So number one, I'm going to base this relationship on what Allah said, what the Rasul says. One. Number two, I need to know who's my mother. How many of the youth before they adult? Do you want to go to Jannah? Show me hands. Alhamdulillah. Is it easy? Is it hard? Very hard? Impossible? It's not impossible. No. But it needs work, like everything else. How many of the adults wants to go to Jannah? Everybody. So this is the foundation. I need to go to Jannah. I want to go to Jannah. And Allah puts me in this relationship. This is my mother. This is my daughter. This is one way of me going to Jannah. By looking at my mom as the most, the number one person has right upon me. And number two, this is my daughter who's peace of me. Think of Rasulullah she's peace of me. Now, there is six kinds of relationship between mother and daughter. Six or seven, I think. Well, does anyone know? There's seven, I think, seven. Let me just make sure so I don't make a mistake. Does anyone know what kind of a relationship you have with your daughter? Or what kind of relationship you have with your mother? Bismillah. Nothing? Okay, so number one, we have, I'm going to go as I have, is sisters. They are like sisters. I'll give you the titles and we will discuss them. So, number one, sisters. And let's see how many of you, your daughter is your sister. We'll talk about it in a second. Close friend. 
Two. That's another one. Three. Complete strangers. We speak French, she speaks Arabic. You love this, she hates it. You want to do this? No way. Strangers. Four. You both put each other together, down. You put her down, she puts you down. They call them taqlil and shay. You put her down, and she puts you down. You will never be successful. You will never understand you. This is you put each other down. You all are smiling. I see a lot of smiles on the woman's faces. Sounds familiar. Okay, four, five. Rejection. You don't want her, and you, she doesn't want you. I wish I never delivered you. I wish you were not my mom. They call it a rough rejection. That's five. Six. The mother, this is from the mother, the mother who encouraged the daughter, al mushajja the one who always push her daughter, positive. Not very good. I'll come to it in the detail. So this is number six. And number seven, the controller. The mother who controls her daughter. Which one is the commonest one? Let's, let's say it again. Number one is sisters. Number two, friends. Number three, strangers. And number four, put each other down. MashaAllah, you wrote it down. And five, rejection. Both reject each other. And six, the one who push her. And number seven, control her. What is the commonest one in this room? Just raise your hand so I can hear you. The youth, let's start with the youth. Yes, what's your name? Zahra? Dorra Allah. All righty. Pearl, huh? MashaAllah. Yalla ya Dorra. Strangers? Sisters. Sisters. What is the commonest one? Yes. Friends. Reality. Mothers. Yes. Encouraging each other. This side is very quiet. Best friends? Wallah. Alhamdulillah. Then why, why do we have this talk? <laughs> why would I have this talk? Let's talk about something else. Okay. I can't hear you. Controlling. Now we are hearing reality. Controlling. What is the commonest one? Pushing. Okay, yes. Sisters. Right. So let's let's come. What is sisters? And this is sisters in the positive way. What is what is how do you define a sister with a sister? What does sisters do? And what does friends do? Both are close, right? Sisters, you share a lot of common things. Even food, even what you like. You go shopping, you like the same taste, right? And then who is the first person? This is youth and adult. Who is the first person you go when you have a problem and talk to? If your daughter doesn't come to you as number one, you have an issue with that relationship. She's not your friend. She's not your sister. So you can claim what you want to claim, but that's how it is. When I have a problem, you have a problem. Who do you pick up the phone on? Mom, because this generation. Because mom is a different, we grew up in a different relationship completely. But in general, if you are a teenager, you pick up the phone on? On your friends, you text your friend. So here you are, number one, each person in this room. Think of your relationship with your daughter. Don't think of what's the general, you. And you think of your relationship with your mother. Is she your friend? Do you trust her? When you make a mistake, major one, you're going to go and talk to your mom and you know she will listen to you. She will not be upset. She's not going to come and say, how dare you do this? Is This is what I worked hard and this is what my daughter do? If that's your response, she's not your friend. If that's your response, she's not your sister. So look into define your relationship. The best are the first two. Sisters and friends even better. It's even better. The one who pushes their daughter always, actually studies showed that she may at the end hurt her. 
because when you push her too much, you want to make her what you are not. You wanted to be a physician, but you couldn't. You push her to be, but she doesn't want to be, but you push them. So don't be pushy. Give them space. I always say this. Give them space as long as the space is pleasing to Allah. If the space is not pleasing to Allah, then we will discuss different. So what's the relationship? That's the third question you're going to ask. What is your, what kind of relationship you have with your daughter? What kind of a relationship you have with your mother? If I ask the young, what, what's somebody from this side? What is your relationship with your mother? Well, if your mother is here, it's going to be tough for you to tell me. Right? So it's, it's a tough question. Anyway, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. The best example of mother in the Quran, who, who can tell me? Best example of a mother and an example of a daughter. Sayyidah Hajar, not in the Quran. In the Quran. Yes. Durra. MashaAllah. Look at Durra. She's the only one who's answering. Mother of? I can't hear her. The mother of Sayyidina Musa. You wanna you wanna know what mother feels? You wanna know youth what mother feels? Read the Quran and see what Umm Musa said. Right? When they took him from her, her heart became empty. Means nothing fills the heart of your mother except you. Regardless what she say and does. Because this is natural. Is how Allah created the mother and the best daughter in the Quran. Yeah, but Ukht Musa came as a sister. When I'm talking about a daughter, فلما وضعتها قالت رب إني وضعتها أنثى. Who is she? Sayyidah Maryam. And she said, Ya Allah, she's a girl. And at that time, the girls worked, the girls didn't work. The boys worked and they they were looked at. Because they work, they, they can serve Allah more. And she said, Ya Allah, but she's a girl. Meaning she will not be able to serve you the way the boys serve. And Allah showed her what a girl can do. Obedient, servant of Allah, and Allah gave her everything. Sayyidina Zakaria, when he came, he used, she used to sit, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He comes and see always food in her, with her. And he said, Ya Maryam, anna laki hada. Where did this come from? And she said, min indillah. Allah gives. This is what you need to be all. Yeah, it is high, high, high end. It's not impossible. Once, one day a week. One day a week you are Maryam. One day a week you are Umar Musa. You cannot be and should not be always, always like this. Fighting. I've seen mothers, I've seen youth say it to me. I hate her. And I was like, subhanAllah, what did this mother do to this girl? to say, I hate her. And the mother says, I wish I never delivered her. So we really have to move back, take a breath, think, and see where did we go wrong. There's a very beautiful book written. I looked, it was actually a PhD thesis. It's very interesting. How many immigrant mothers in this room? Immigrant, so meaning you're not born raised here. Right? Okay. This is why actually I looked at that study. This is a study, it's done by the, um, it's a Muslim psychologist uh, in 2007. She looked at, and I think she's a she, I don't remember the name now. She looked at the relationship. This is actually the title of it, is the relationship, she's Jordanian. The relationship of the immigrant mothers with their adolescent girls, American born and the impact of that relationship on the health of the girls. Health general and the, and the psychological health. It's very interesting study. And I'll share some facts with you, but the conclusion was, which, which to me was really surprising, the healthier the relationship, the healthier the girl is. And it's, it looked at girls, didn't look at boys, it looked at girls. 
And the less healthier this relationship is, this is for you all mothers, the less healthier the girls are. Healthier health, physical, and psychological. So don't brush this relationship. This relationship needs to be worked at, worked for. You need to work for it, make it work as we say. You know, those of you who are here, you know what I'm saying. People look at you and say, make it happen. I was like, I can't do it. Yes, you can. I add to it, ask Allah to make it happen. So what did they find in this? There's a book also I highly recommend you, in case you didn't read it. It was actually by two Muslim couple. It's um, Ikram and Bashir in 2007. And their book titled Challenges of Parenting Muslim Teens in North America. What challenges? And this is in 2007. <laughs> they need to rewrite the book now. <laughs> right? Because the life has completely changed. It's almost 17, 18 years. So the book is called Challenges of Parenting Muslim Teens in North America. They talked about their daughter. And the daughter wrote in the book a chapter. And she said, and I'm going to read, this is her, and her name is Huda. And I'm reading it because it's a book published. And she said, I committed to myself I need the girls to listen to this. She was 10 years old. She said, I committed myself to wear hijab before I was even 10 years old. But the most thing that I stood out is, is not the hijab, it's my style of hijab. Wait, mothers, this is for the mothers. I liked a certain look that was called the skater style. You know what that is? Youth, do you know what that is? She explained it now. Okay. Skaters wore big t shirt, really baggy pants, sneakers, and caps. That was my style between grade six until about grade 10. But that by the time I was in grade 11, I was letting the skater style go and starting to dress in a more appropriate manner. This is the girl saying this. Finally, I took the decision to wear my skirt and no pants as my mother always wanted. Did you get it? What do you learn from this? Mothers first, mothers first. This is in the book. What do you learn? This is the girl saying it. The mother should be a role model. Her mother wears beautiful hijab. The daughter did not. She wore hijab, but she wore her style. What do you learn from this? Be patient with them. This is what it is. Because she look at what she said at the end. Finally, grade 11. That means how old was she? 16, right? 15, 16. She said, at grade 11, finally, I took the decision to wear only skirts and no pants as my mother was urging me to do. It took her seven years to do what her mother wanted her to do. How patient is this mother? How patient is this? This is what I wanted you all to learn. What made the mother patient? 10 years old, decided to wear hijab. Whoa. She looked at the positive one. She didn't look, you're wearing baggy, what people will say about you, you look like a boy. Right? She said to her, again, I didn't read the book, the whole thing, but I'm assuming, because what made the girl continue to do, write this experience, and then change at the end. Patient, another foundation, patient, is extremely important, it's very difficult, but it's very important. And I'm looking at, I'm not looking down, I'm looking top, because the patient has to come from the adults. You are not 14 and 13 and 15. You're not good going through, and I'll read to you some of the, these are studies, what teens go through physically and emotionally. We grew up in a different era. We grew up in an era, and this is not, 200 years ago. We grew up in an era where we had no choices, right? You didn't go to the supermarket and you had 10 kinds of apple to choose from. We didn't. 
It was much easier, by the way, because it's just one apple and take it. And now you have to look. And which one? Right? You want to buy a phone. Oh, which one? The point. Patient. Foundation. Again, what Allah and the Rasul not my culture and not how I grew up. Number one. Number two. Youth, who is she? And mom, who is she for you? Two, three. The name of the game is patient. Both sides, but I expect from the adult more than the youth, because you are an adult. So in this book, that's what they said. They said, um, and this is study. They say the most important thing, just because of the time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss some, some things. The study looked at immigrant mothers and girls who were born and raised here in the United States. What three factors affect that relationship? Three things. The immigrant mothers, what they brought with them, the baggage they brought with them. And two is religion. And I was surprised they put religion number two. Religion is number two. And number three is the new culture here. How many of you are from the Arab world in this in this room? And how many of you are from the indo pak background? Okay, so almost 50-50. And everybody here is born raised in the States. Am I right? Or at least you came here one year or two years. So you basically are here. So when you look at your mom and she doesn't understand some words, I don't understand what it means. Do you have this problem? You say things to your mom, it's like what she's saying. That's because it's a different culture. I'll give you an example. I lived in England and then I moved to the United States. Right? And I was actually in California the first year. So when I went to the university, everybody saying cool. And I was like, what is cool? Because in England they don't use this word. They use cool for cool weather. Right? Those of you who lived in England. And I was like, what is this? Oh, cool. Mean it is nice. Right? It's sweet. This is different culture. So they say words, they say words you don't understand. But it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just this is the way the culture is. And there's some words I honestly don't know the meaning. I have to Google. I have a friend who, she has, uh, now he's 17 years old boy. His joy is to tease his mother. His joy. Right? And he calls me because I get it and she doesn't. And he looks at me and starts laughing. And I looked at her and I was like, he's teasing you, forget it. Because he used words, she doesn't understand the meaning. And he's not saying bad words. He's saying very funny words, he just don't know the meaning. So culture, religion, and the new culture. Now, very nice statement I'm gonna say to everybody. The most exceptional relationship in psychology is the mother-daughter relationship. They say this is extremely exceptional. It's not like even spouses or brother and sister or sister and sister. Mother and daughter is absolutely exceptional. Why? Starts from birth. This is a relationship starts from birth. It's not a relationship starts when I went to college or when I went to high school or when I moved to California. It starts from the moment, the day you come out and you cried. And you cried. Both of you cried. Yes? This is what I tell my patients. There's a three stay three times in the whole pregnancy delivery. I see, I as a physician see your tears. There's a fourth one. Fourth one when you're when you are at home and you did the pregnancy test. You jumped and cried. I don't see this. But when you come to my office and I do an ultrasound, right? And you see the baby and you start crying. You see the fetal heart. I've never done it, and the mother doesn't cry. And then at 20 weeks, when you see the baby moving and you hear the fetal heart, and especially if I can say it's a boy or a girl, you see tears. And third one never failed is when the baby cried. Never. I've been doing this for more than 20 years. And for all of you, the youth, when you were born, absolutely you're crying. And if you were not crying, I'll make you cry. <laughs> because then I'll start to worry about you. And please forgive me or spank you. <laughs> but your mom has to cry. Never. I just delivered 2 a.m. this morning. And absolutely the mother cried. 
It's beautiful tears. So it's a relationship starts from birth. That's one. Number two. Then it's three stages. Children. Like think of your young brother or sister. What is this relationship? It's love. It's cute. I take care of her. Right? So it is a giving. Then comes to adult or adolescence, that age. Alhamdulillah, everybody here is that age. This is an age of what? Becomes what's the relationship? Not, love never changes, but it's not giving now. It's what? Oh, my back, Vicky. Understanding. Absolutely have to understand them more than they understand you. You need to understand them. And you need to know why she said no. Why she didn't do what you want her to do. Why she likes her friends more than she likes you. Why she doesn't wash the dishes. Why she doesn't make the bed. They are all laughing. Right? Why? Why she said, I'm tired, but if her friend calls her, she's up on the internet till 2 a.m. Not you. Okay. Because the internet is off by 10 p.m. in the house. So the relationship changes. Then when the mother gets older, now the, you on the back, you become the giver to your mother. Or you, in another 20 years, you will be the giver to your mother. This is the relationship release. It's a three stages. And even a Rasulullah saw to Islam, this is in general for the children. You know the seven and the 14? You know that? So up to seven, you love them, you play with them, you give them, they bring you happiness. 7 to 14, you start playing with them, meaning come to their level. 14 and above, they are friends. Done. No more do because I told you. She will not do it. And you know what happened in this country, and I don't want to say it because of the ages here. All mothers, you need to know the law of this country. And what's the rights of this country? The rights of the youth of this country. It's not back home. Nothing to do with back home. And even, by the way, back home is changing. Because everything is following. Because of the... So the mother is none... They, and I'm sharing from the studies. They said none stop source of love, support, kindness. And the, the relationship will be transformed when they become this age, love and advice, but no force. No force can't force her to do things. You can't force her to do hijab, by the way. Can't. This is what you say to her. You became an adult. And I say this because it is very important because it's mother, daughter. You say, listen, once you have your cycle, you became an adult. Allah will ask you. Allah will ask me, did you teach her? Number one, do you do it yourself? Don't ask your daughter to do something you don't do then please forgive me, you're a hypocrite. And as this famous poet says, start with yourself and, and stop yourself from doing evil. Then at that point, if your nafs listen to you, you become a teacher and people will listen to you. So if you want your daughter to have a good manners, you need to have a good manners. As say very famous, anybody from Egypt here? Right, what is, oh, mashallah, what is the famous saying in Egypt about mother and daughter? Uh huh. Turn, turn, listen to this youth. I, don't, I can't say it in the air because I really don't know it. But you literally, it's like a container, turn it upside down, and the daughter is the mother. So this is the mother, turn it this, this is the daughter. They're exactly the same, but two faces of one coin. It's two faces to one coin. And a lot of the mothers look at the daughter, they see in them themselves. So absolute source of love, advice, parenting style. This is also for the adult. Needs to change with the age. You need to change with the age. When she's seven, it's not the same when she's nine or when she's 11. Let's say, no, when she's 16 or 18, it's very different when she went to college. It's very different when she got married. You're still her mother. You say this, I'm still your mother. Well, yes, she is. And by the way, they come back when they get married. 
because they want the mom to take care of the babies, right? Exactly. So don't worry, they're coming back. But the parenting style changes. You still have mother. Absolutely, you still have daughter. You know what I call this relationship? Non-negotiable. I've no doubt, I have no choice in this. I have no choice who's my mother. I have no choice who's my father. I have no choice who's my siblings. But I have a choice to make this relationship a source for me to go to Jannah. And this is your choice, all of you. So the source of love, mother, parenting style changes. And the best relationship is actually friends. If you are your daughter friend, then you absolutely did. Mothers, what are you expect? What, what do you expect from your mother? Let's say somebody from the youth. What do you expect from your mother? Anyone other than Dobra? Yes. Ah, Jasmine is here, mashallah. I can't hear you. I expect my mom to find like in me like choices, not like my parents. So she wants, this is one of the most smartest girls I have met. Mashallah Tabarakullah. Um, she expects, listen, this mother is. How old is Jasmine? Ten? Ten. Nine. Nine. Like I want to like I want my mom to like She wants she wants her mom to give her the right to choose. Nine years old. How many of you wants to have children anymore? <laughs> but this is reality. So do I give them choices all the time? Yes. Yes. But the two choices has to be pleasing to Allah. Or the five choices has to be pleasing to Allah. But don't force choi your choice in everything. She wants to wear black, let her wear black. She wants to wear green, let her do that. As we say in, in reality, choose your battle. Choose your battle. Let her do that. So mother and re daughter relationship should be. Let's, let's take fantasy. And then we'll come to reality. Should be friends, warm, Intimate, mother, look at her daughter as she is part of her, and she wants her to be even better than her, but without force. That's the relationship. No control. No whatever I'm missing, she needs to do it, or she has to listen to me. And the relationship is actually based on religion, and this, this is based on, regardless of your authenticity or religion, this is how it should be. It doesn't matter, I grew up this, this is different. No, it is mother-daughter relationship, is love, intimate, non-negotiable, my way to Jannah, both sides, and I want her to be the best, but she could be my test. She absolutely can be my test, both ways. Right? Sayyidina Nuh, his son was Kafir. Didn't believe. And Sayyidina Ibrahim, his father was Kafir. Didn't believe. So it's not always the perfect relationship. Could be completely different, but the style doesn't change. When Sayyidina Nuh talked to his son, he didn't tell him, Go, you are Kafir, you're a disbeliever. Go and let you drown, and I will not see you anymore. He didn't say this to him. When you get upset with your daughter, what do you say? He said, Ya Bunayr Kamana, wala takum ma'al kafiri. My son, he's kafir. My, my boy, actually, said, Ya Bunay, my, my, my little baby, come with us and don't be with the disbeliever. And he didn't listen to him. He still didn't say, Go, let's go to Jahannam, I don't care about you. He didn't say this. Even after that, he made dua to Allah. Ya Rabbi Nabni min ahdi, wa inna wa'adaka al haq. Ya Allah, my son. It's part of me. And your, your promise is the truth. And Sayyidina Ibrahim, when he was talking to his father, this is the youth. He didn't say, Daddy, you're a kafir. You don't know what I'm talking about. I have knowledge. You know nothing. You don't even know the language. Look at your accent. Go to hell. He didn't say that. Yeah, Abati. Daddy, 
This is Surah Maryam. This is Quran. Remember the base. The base is call Allah. What Allah says, Ya Abati, la ta'budi shaytan. Don't worship shaytan. Inna shaytan kamil rahmani asiya. Shaytan absolutely is dis disobedient to the most merciful. Ya Abati, inni qad ja'ani min al ilm dari. What I don't know, I know more than what you know. But in this way, you didn't say, Mom, you know I'm nothing. You're always in the kitchen. Don't do that. That's not, that's, you're not going to get to Jannah this way. This is not what Allah wants you to say. It doesn't matter what people say outside. We're different. And people always ask me, are we different? Yes, I am. Alhamdulillah. I'm so happy I'm different. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me different. Alhamdulillah. Why, why I'm not happy with the way Allah made me? So look at that. It's an intimate, it's a beautiful relationship. It's a friendship. Mothers, now things that mothers should never ignore. I put this for myself. Mothers, number one, don't ignore that the girls are as they are growing, especially this age, up till 18. They have special needs because of the hormonal changes. How many of you women here have PMS? No hand. Really? So what I see in my in my office is what? Is a different country? <laughs> and nobody wants to raise their hand. That's okay. Right? Exactly. So the same way you have, how many of you had emotional changes in pregnancy? Very common. Same thing here. So you need to know, don't ignore that when she is suddenly have bad, the way she responds to you is not the usual. Don't ignore. There may be a reason behind it. What time of the month is it? is it? When is your cycle? And don't make fun of it. This is how Allah created us. You will not give birth to her unless you have a cycle. This is how I tell women. I said, Alhamdulillah, if you don't have a period, you will not be able to get pregnant. Alhamdulillah. So don't ignore that they are changing Ch age wise, psychological wise, and physical wise. Number two, this is extremely important, especially for the immigrant woman. They are not going through the same experience you went to through. Don't say, when I was your age, how much you hear that? <laughs> you just see their faces. <laughs> Don't say that. Because when you were 12 years old, there was no internet. There was no phone. Do you remember? There was only one phone in the house. Right? Only one phone. And the phone was plugged. And everybody runs to pick up the phone. You remember? That's not, that. By the way, this is not in the 1800. <laughs> this is in 2000, 2000 before the internet, right? So don't expect the same experience when you were in school. What they taught you and me way different than what they are teaching them. They are going through different experience. So take this in consideration. Number. Three, again, important, this is all from the study. Don't expect that the relationship is based on domestic need. You need to do your bed. You need to clean the kitchen. You need to empty the dishwasher. That's it? That's the relationship? And where is my lunch? What is my dinner? Are you taking me to practice? Is that the relationship? Did you get the point? It's way more than that. It's way more than that. So it is not about domestic responsibility or the usual social roles. You need to grow up and be a good girl because you're going to get married. What people will say about you. How about what Allah says about you? How does Allah, when he sees you, think of you? So this is the three. It's about knowledge. Learn about her. Learn about them. How many of you mothers? When the daughter is watching a cartoon, you sit and watch it with her. Let alone a movie. Let alone a book she is reading. You read it also. Share the knowledge. Not, ah, this is how I was taught. You need to do this because that's how my mom told me. That's not. What are they learning you need to learn? Do you read their books in school? Do you read their social study? Do you read their, their geography? I don't know if they even teach them geography. 
So you need to share the knowledge, meaning not only one way, what you know, give it to them. You need to see what are the what are they being fed there. Literally, I had all my nieces and nephews, they're already close in age, one time all together, and literally copy and paste the question. One lives in the Midwest, one lives in the East Coast, one lives here in California, but they all answer the same. I was like, what do they feed you in school? Same thing. It's very different than you and me. So learn about this. Sometimes yeshiva will dance. Sometimes your hair will become gray. Become gray, but it's reality. It's reality. This is what they are exposed to in school. You need to learn this. So share the knowledge. And the most important thing, you need to acknowledge. And I'm going to stop here. Yeah, it's Hama, 730, alhamdulillah. You need to acknowledge. It's not a smooth ride. It's not a smooth ride. It's full of challenges. But and there's a big one here. It's the biggest name Allah gives you. The biggest name Allah gives you have a mother. I was talking to someone who's very successful. I can't tell you how successful. The mother left at age 14 to go to work because they need, she wanted to support them to go to get a good education. Now, very successful person, missed that long, missed that moment. It's very different when you talk and your FaceTime versus when you have the real hug. So cherish this. The fact you have a daughter is a ni'mah. The fact you have a mother is a ni'mah. I will give my life to have my mom back again. I can't do it. And all of you will reach that day because that's how it is. Look at it as a blessing. Be grateful. Be thankful. It's not easy. Full of challenges. But Allah makes it easy. And look at them that they are a blessings, they are a responsibility, but they also are gonna be responsible for themselves. And your job is like when they were two years of age, started to walk. What did you do? You didn't take their hand, you let them walk, but you were behind them, right? And sometimes you let them fall, right? And what did you say? Let them fall, right? Let them get up and learn. That's how you are. You need to learn to move back. But don't let go completely, but move back, give them their space. And the last word I will say to them, there is no ni'mah like a mother. No one will love you. No one will love you like your mother. It's the only unconditional lover. That's how they say it. It's the only person who loves and gives without expecting anything back. She doesn't wake up at 4 o'clock or 5 a.m and most of you do that in the school day and prepare their lunch because she will give you the hug. No, most of you don't even do that because you don't have time. You're running to the bus. Because this is how she becomes happy when she takes care of you. So look at it this way. When it gets very tough, when it gets difficult, ask Allah to make it easy. And the goal of this relationship is to please Allah. Not to please anybody else. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanakallah wa bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi tasliman kathira. Now we have questions. There's a lot of comments on the chat. You probably see it. Questions. Yes, yalla, I was waiting for this. Yes, of course, Yasmin. What if your mom not Muslim? Look at this question. Ya Allah, what about if your mom is not Muslim? Do you love her the same way? Absolutely. You do exactly the same with a lot of dua. If the mom doesn't want you to be a Muslim, that's a challenge, but you still take care of her. She's still your mother. You love her. Maybe, not maybe, I've seen it many times, it's your love to your mom that will change her. Your support to your mom will change her. The only time you don't listen to her if she wants you to do something that is not pleasing to her. There's a question on the, oh, there was a question on the chat. Yeah. My mom doesn't want me, oh, that's very common. My mom doesn't want me to wear hijab. Since I started wearing it, she has gone into severe depression. SubhanAllah. Now, uh, 
last few days, she keeps talking about she wants to die of, because she feels she has lost her daughter. How can I manage this situation as I feel very worried about her? SubhanAllah, you read the question? The mother is severely depressed. She needs to be treated. The mother needs to be treated. It's depression, I'm glad this question came up, <clears throat> especially in the Muslim community. Depression is a disease. It's like you have a headache, like you have abdominal pain. You need to be treated and treated ASAP. This is suicidal thoughts. She needs to be treated. So the, the answer is the hijab was the trigger. But there is a lot of factors before that. So she definitely needs to go treated immediately because this is very serious after any psychiatrist you pick up the phone and says my mom wants to die they must see her immediately they are not even going to hospitalize her yeah question yes please So, yes. um, yeah. Say it again. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, cultural um, practices are manifestations of uh, religious requirements or rules. So, but we may not know like what hadith or where in the Quran it states, but we know it stems from religion, right? We have that big uh, knowledge that okay, it stems from religion. So, um, when you say like okay. Uh, you know, when we're asking, okay, do this or don't do this, and you know, it may be from culture, but it could be from religion as well. Okay. So, how do I know? Basically, the question stems to the following: How do I know this is religion or this is culture? Can it be both? Absolutely, right? But majority of it based on religion, but has been changed. Give me an example of something you think it is culture and it is religion or vice versa. Like, for example, wearing nail polish, right? Um, uh, some cultures may not allow girls uh, to wear nail polish, but you don't have to do, um, you know. So is it culture or religion? So it, it can be culture, right? Because in your culture, you don't wear nail polish or in your family traditions, you don't wear nail polish. But it also has a religious basis. But you may not know that, um, you know. OK, that's yeah. a good example. So when I say to my daughter, don't do this, right? Or my daughter says, why not? And that's the commonest answer, right? And you need to know why not. Because you cannot answer, well, I never did it. Well, you are not me. Or my mom didn't let me. Why? We never ask this because we are a different generation, but they need to. So is nail polish foundation? And I'm not talking about nail polish per se, but in general, whatever is this, go to the religion. Is it allowed or it's not allowed? If it is allowed in the religion, my answer, I don't care about the culture. Unless the culture, if I do it, I will really be in not a good position, which is very unlikely. And the opposite, if the culture allowed it, but the, but the religion doesn't allow it, then absolutely I'm not doing it. Even if all the cultures say this. So when you are in this, alhamdulillah, we live in a time, all the information is available. Is available. I mean, near polish. We'll go to anywhere, ask anybody, they will tell you the answer. Some things are more cut and clear, but what about the more, uh, you know, the not, not, not based, but like, um, it's more like higher up the kind of uh, idea. Give me an example. Like, um, why make dua if everything is predetermined? Uh, that's a complete aqidah. This is why we're talking about it in the eight week series. But that's not culture or that's uh, religion. That's religion. Why do I make a dua if everything is predestined? We will talk about it when we talk. But what is the commonest? Don't raise your voice, right? This is one of the most annoying things to mothers. Am I right? Don't shout at me. Don't answer me this way. Right? True? Girls, is that right? Mom looks at you and says, don't you talk to me this way. Is that religion or that's culture? And which one is more? Religion, of course. Why? Because she is my mother and he just told me the person, the most 
important person or the number one person that has right upon me to treat her with excellence is mother. How can I shout at you? And for the girls, do you like me to shout at you? Thank you. <laughs> then that's it. If I don't like it on myself, how do I do it for the other? So that's absolutely religion. Take another thing. Don't, this is something very common. Maybe I don't know about the Indo part, but I see it a lot in the Arab world. You and your brother, the brother goes with his friends and come back whatever time he wants, but you need to be back home at eight or nine. Why? Why? Because you're a girl. What does that mean? I need to be worried about both of them. Religion tells me protect them both, right? I'm sorry, I will not, if I had a boy and a girl, it's the same ruling. I'll tell you what, go and read Surah Al-Nur. Religion. Al-Zaniyatu al zani al sariqa wa sariqa The person, he or she who commit adultery, he or she who steal, it's the same ruling. The same ruling. When I am worried about her, I'm worried about my son, I'm worried about my daughter. That's culture. That's how I grew up. I know this very well. That's culture. But religion tells me I need to protect them both. Because if he makes a mistake, he's going to be responsible. She makes a mistake. What do you mean? So I let him go and come back at 1 p.m. when I am because he's stronger? So he's okay to go out, but she's not okay to go out? Both of them should not go out, believe me. We don't know what. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. That's, I will never let my son at 1 a.m. or my daughter at 1 a.m. Because you don't know what's on that on those streets. And both are my, I, I don't like the word responsibility, but both I will be asked about. And he may make a different mistake than she makes, true, but both of them are not pleasing to Allah. That's where culture comes in. Very clear one, right? What else in culture? I'm sorry? And let's talk about daughter and girls. Let's not talk about other things. Well, one day we'll do a lecture about culture and religion. <laughs> but let's talk about in raising children, boys and girls. It's a big, huge problem. Girlfriend and boyfriend. It's okay for him to have a girlfriend, but it's not okay for her to have a boyfriend. Who said so? Who said that? Both say should not. Period. Period. There is no if and but. Both lower your gaze. Both read the Quran. It's not my words. Lower your gaze. No intermingle, no free mixing. Both. Let him go and do whatever, but she doesn't because she's a girl. Then then this is not religion, this is typical culture. Both, both. You need to, to protect him as you protect her and protect her as you protect him. She needs to get good education, he needs to get good education. She wants to go and become a writer. I had somebody recently says, writer? And I said, why not? A Muslim writer, ya Allah. If she writes a beautiful thing, why not? You know what? We need to change this. It's, uh, this is where culture comes in. It's always look at, is, is this professional service now? Is what she is doing or he is doing is allowed by Allah, then alhamdulillah, then I'm fine. Um, both are the same. This is all the comments here. Don't, don't my daughter, have, uh, For absolutely not. And absolutely he is not too. Neither the boys have girlfriend or the girl has a boyfriend. I'm sorry. This is where I am Muslim. This is where I put the barrier between my the culture of the country and my religion. Because I told you this is based on what Allah says. You go to the Muslim world, they have the same thing. Is that okay? No. Absolutely. What Allah said. I always tell people, Allah said so. I hear and obey. Allah didn't say, then I look into, they call it also in fiqh, they call it al urf What is the culture? As long as the culture does not contradict religion, 
you follow it actually because you are living in it. What about the that's you cannot separate completely. Of course, you will communicate. Like I worked last night, half of the colleagues with me were men. That's where I you learn how to deal with men. You need to know how to speak to men, how to put the barrier, how to put the private space, we call it. And you, you don't, I mean, this is where you need to teach the girl and the boy. Both. Both. Yes. I'll tell you, Thomas, when we have to leave. The men will hate us. I see that. Yeah. I the American law that when they used to have age of 18, uh, we're not allowed to tell them like, what to do or not. 15, my friend. My law is that when they are 18, they can even move out of the room. So for us, I think it's a kind of abuse because kids sometimes joke about this that, okay, if you keep pushing or if you keep advising, okay, if you keep telling us what to do or what not to do, it's all right to move out. I'm not talking about my kids, but I hear it's very true. It's very true. Do you think there is a, like, a word for us when, um, when you have to stop giving our children or uh, giving them advice? I mean, when you mentioned that, and uh, this is a normal um, case, it's not even a hadith. So I think, I don't know, what do you think about when, again, when as a mom or a dad, I have to stop saying what you can do and what you can do. That is a very good question. It's, an, it's a reality, Hadar. The question is a painful reality. You need to know, when you come and live in this country, there is things which is the norm of this country. And it's very abnormal for us, religious-wise and cultural-wise. But it's very normal. Do you know what's the norm? Those of you who work, when you see your friend, colleague, your, your male colleague, they hug each other. That's normal. It's not boyfriend, girlfriend. This is the norm. You have to go back and say this. And then they know. Otherwise, the norm, they come and hug you. Normally, come back from vacation, that's normal. Normal by age 18, they keep saying to each other, you still living with your parents? That's how they talk. Yes, that's the culture. Two things I need to know. I can't change people, only Allah change. I need to, when I brought them here, and I'm raising them here, I need to know reality of this culture. Can I change the culture? The answer is no. Can I, by my work, by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe, maybe they will not leave a good possibility, but get ready for that. Your job in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to raise them as a good Muslim. So when they are out there by themselves, they do things not because they are afraid of you, because they want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you leave them in the jungle, they are pleasing Allah. And if you leave them in the college and whatever, they are pleasing Allah. That's number one, what you want them to do. Is engrave in them the love of Allah, not the fear. Don't use the word Jahannam, punishment, all this. It doesn't work. They will literally leave it. Engrave on them the love of Allah. Engrave on them why we are here. And you need to practice this before them. They need to see in you that religion is number one in your life. That when the Adhan comes in and you are washing the dishes, you leave the dishes because it's Adhan time or if you are on the phone, or you're watching. So when they get to age 18, majority of them, they will move out. I mean, there's studies, I can't do it, again, because of the age here. It was done on Muslim uh, boys and girls in colleges. The numbers are of fear. You know, it makes you wonder. It's scary, the numbers. This is a true study was done. The behavior on Muslim college students. They don't think they are protected unless you engrave it in them and you practice. Have I seen examples amazing? Yes, I have. Have I seen parents who are amazing but Allah tested them with the children? Yes, and I've seen the opposite. I've seen opposite. I've seen people, I say, I'm sure you were adopted. No way this is all your parents. How completely not practicing, you wonder how this, but the norm is what you plant in your home. This is what I'm gonna say to everybody. Plant in your house, actually plant in your heart, 
and I'm talking to the mothers, the love of Allah. You do things to please him. You don't do things because he said no, not because of any human being or culture or whatever. The way you dress, the way you speak, the way you interact is what pleases him. The daughter sees you, this, maybe not at age 18, but she would be like this girl. At one point she grew up and go back because she saw you. But that's one of the issues of this country, absolutely. Independence, they feed them in schools, is I. This culture is the culture of I. Those of you who grew up here, you know what I'm talking about. I did it. This is how they tell you. I did it. Mom said this to you, you go and do that. This is how it is. I am against the flood. And I need to fight with love and with my connection to Allah. And the only one who will protect them is not you. It is him, subhanahu. And the more you have a relationship with him, the more your children will be. I had many people come to me complaining about their children with all what you can think of. My first question is, what disobedience of Allah is in that house? What disobedience in that house, not outside? Source of income, what do you watch? Who do you interact with? Do you practice yourself? All these, and may Allah protect everybody, the Rabbi, and we have to stop, I think so, because yes. the men are outside. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah reward everybody in the Islamic Center of Arwine and everybody who came, I enjoyed it, I hope you did. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all strong. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasdim al kathira. Thank you.